One more. Look what I'm sending you. Look what I'm sending you. Well, the last one. So we, we heard from Fauble, remember, he had the flu, and, you know, he, he felt confident it wouldn't affect him. Des Linden told us the same thing. She had the flu, but felt confident it wouldn't affect him. But, you know, there's no margin for error in this racing. And, and then any kind of uh, flaw in your preparation was definitely going to play out over these three eight-mile eight loops that were so hilly. Originally, this course was going to play well into the original Tokyo Marathon course, but... The Tokyo Marathon has been moved considerably north to Sapporo. How are these two courses going to stack up? Well, I mean, Sapporo, the course is, is pretty flat. It's very, very different to this. So you could argue that you're not getting the wrong team selected here. Absolutely, these athletes are running their hearts out for those Olympic places. But it'll be interesting to see how it impacts upon the results of the U.S. team. We had a great time in Rio. Let's not forget that. The U.S. team really excelled themselves at the marathon, the men and women in Rio. But in Tokyo... It would be a different story if people might look back at this and think this could have been the reason. And this looks like a bit of a breakaway for Tulema. And let's say she has not had the best preparation over the last year or so. Uh, last June, she suffered a stress fracture in her right femur. Barry ran a speed until the end of August and didn't race again. I will take care of that one. November 3rd, where oh, she did finish I know where the seat come eight. from. I have to clean. It was an improvement over her previous run in that race. So a very tough athlete to come back from a very difficult injury. And, and when she was injured, she took to drive and driving an Uber to make money. She likes to with the passengers. So, uh, yeah, I love that. Back to ground zero and uh, getting on with the life when you're, when you're injured and you have to get the beat and build some money. Getting on with it here inside the final mile here in Atlanta. Back into downtown. And now we continue to look at third place. Sally Kipiego has had it for the longest time. Can she hang on to it? At the moment, it's looking pretty, pretty safe. 
You have 15 yeah, seconds uh, like between her and Nora the Weaver in fourth place, and then Des Linden, a further six seconds back at the last uh, checkpoint, 24, as they went through 24 miles. Kim Diego, in the summer of 2017, gave birth to her daughter, Emma, and I like what she said after that, that her body fell apart afterwards. In fact, every time she tried to get back to running, something would happen, some small injury, some small illness. So she really had to fight to get back uh, to full strength. But she said having a child and fighting to get back has made her mentally stronger. I want to just not let this broadcast finish without just saying, isn't it tremendous to see the growth of women's distance running? 685 participants and qualifiers took the start of this today. More than double women to the men, and it continues to rise and grow in strength not only in the U.S. but all around the world. And you're looking at the top three here, ready to go to Tokyo in July. And it's part of a continuum you know, that, that dates all the way back to Joan Benoit Samuelson winning the 1984 Olympic marathon, Dina Castor winning the bronze medal in 2004 in Athens. Since 2016, American women, a bronze medal at the World Championships, Amy Craig in 2017, Shalane Flanagan winning the New York City Marathon in 2017, Des Linden, Boston in 2018. You know, it's just part of a, a strengthening of distance running across the board, as Tim said earlier, but especially among the women. But plenty of big races nowadays around the world are actually seeing more women in quick than men. You know, it's a, it's a trend that seems unstoppable at the moment. But I have to come back to the differences that I noticed. You know, across the Atlantic from the UK to over here, where you've got 350 million people, something like that. You've got massive resources. You've got this wonderfully funded squad by Shoot and Police. You've got your scholarship system, the universities and colleges. So athletes here in the USA probably get more opportunities when their talent starts coming through than any other nation in the world, you know? And, and they do grasp it with both hands and good luck to them. And, and that's the result is you get this incredible quality of racing and quality of athletes. Alephine Tulimov, the leader in the women's, and she's with a half, an, uh, half a mile from home. There's been a change a little further back. And that is Des Linden has now moved into fourth over Laura Pui. And how far off Sally Kipiego is she? Look in the background. So Des Linden has Kipiego in her sights. Is half a mile going to be enough time, enough distance to catch her? It seems to be about 20 seconds in the last report we had, which is a lot of time to make up, uh, with so little yeah. space left in the race. Wait, 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 wait. never goes up, though. Okay. It says it's uh, a great athlete. I didn't know you could not. Yeah. She's got the track pedigree in her background, and uh, 